uh, how did I get started? Uh, it's nothing I planned. When I was, uh, you know, early teens, shiny shoes in my father's store, uh, this big burly cop came in and asked for a shine, and uh, I gave him the best shine I'd ever given anyone. And uh, he steps down off the chair and walks out the door, you know, and I was flabbergasted, you know. <laughs> he didn't even say thank you. And I thought, wow, uh, this man represents, the, he's a cop. And uh, so the next week, I was in my father's store again, shining shoes, and my father's in the window, and he actually saw the cop crossing the street. And right away, he assumed, rightly, uh, and he said to me in Italian, here comes that piece of turd again. By the time the cop got in the store, my father was standing in front of the door on the inside. And my father, who was not a very big man, confronted this man in uniform with a gun and a billy. And he says, you want to shine, officer? And the cop said, yeah. And my father put out his hand and he said, 10 cents, pay first. And the cop made a U-turn and walked out the door and was never seen again. My father stood up to this cop, and that cop, he cheated me out of my labor. And then when I became a cop, I thought, well, I'm certainly not going to be like that cop, and I want to pay for everything I get. I must say, as a kid, I wasn't the best kid on the block, and there were cops that would give you a break, you know. I'm going to be 88 next month, and this may be the very last time I talk uh, publicly to anyone. So, A lot of what you have done in your life has required a lot of courage, and I'm just wondering where that courage came from. Um, it came from having to persevere. I mean, even in school, the nuns uh, and brothers, uh, they thought I was stupid because my English wasn't so good. And I was dyslexic, and I was a very bad student. I hated school, but I ended up graduating from two colleges. But I found out that what you learn in school is what other people wrote, and you have to go out and find the truth for yourself. And that's why every vacation year I had as a cop, I went to a different country and never spoke English. I tried to learn their language like I didn't speak English. And and now I, I speak, you know, half a dozen languages. So if you don't recognize people that you can't talk, their language, they're just like you. They just talk a different language. That's all. They want all the things you want. Not what your government is telling you that they're evil and they want to kill you. And these are governments fighting among themselves. And we have to pay the price. If I had any advice to give to young kids, it would be to be very careful who you trust and what you are led to believe, regardless of the source. Because in my life, I found, and I have proof, that history books do not necessarily contain the truth, but the words of those in power that wrote them. And I can give you examples because a half a dozen books have been written by people in power mentioning my name that were written, in my opinion, to distract, distort, discredit, and dishonor me. And the truth I exposed about police corruption. But people don't know that because they read their books and they go, oh, though that guy served ago, he wasn't really because they have to belittle those that tell the truth so they can look good. And Hollywood didn't help either because they made a movie supposedly about my career and they totally fabricated how I got shot. Now, how would you feel if that was you? I said, I actually shot the drug dealer that shot me while my backup, the cops with me, not only let me get shot, but then they left me there to bleed to death. And I'm sorry if I'm getting excited because to this day, I have not forgotten. If 
if it were not for an old man, a tenant in the building who called the police and one cop car responded because he said somebody got shot. The cop that showed up didn't know it was me. So they brought me to the hospital. The police didn't expect me to live, uh, but I did. And later, one of the cops that picked me up actually said, if I knew it was Serpico, I would have left him there to bleed to death. And then after, the New York City Police Department destroyed my records. Oh, they gave me boxes of junk, but the facts they destroyed to cover up uh, what really happened to this very day. If you want to fight justice against corruption, it's never easy, it never was, and it never will be. I do believe, as in my case, the price we pay is well worth holding on to our dignity and our peace of mind. You'll be honored, respected, and admired by those who are honest, moral, and principled. What greater gift can you ask in your lifetime? What is happening today? Uh, it's impossible to know who's telling the truth, and they get away with it because they have the power. It's so easy to be drawn in, especially with the internet today. It's, it's like you step into quicksand and you can't get out. It's hard to get at the truth, but and it has to be your truth. It's not you have to experience it yourself. At 18, yeah. I wanted to join the army. I wanted to fight for my country. Yeah. You know, we are so conditioned to follow government's orders to go and fight other people when they can't make peace in our very own country. That's part of the conditioning from when you're young to be a good patriot. You know, it doesn't matter if you're American or German or Italian. Every country does the same. They train you to, you know, want to defend your, your country. But sometimes your government is the one you have to be defended against. Yes. Everybody knows what's right and wrong. You don't hurt other people. You don't take their land away from them. You don't torture them. You don't make them suffer. You don't bomb them with bombs and bomb hospitals that mutilate little children and say, well, they did it first. What kind of mind thinks like this? And this is a government that's supposed to be protecting its people. You don't protect your people by destroying little innocent children in other countries and making them hate you. They, they just wrote a book, and it's called Marked Man. It's addressed for uh, young adults, and they wanted to pay me $1,000 for me to authorize it. And I said, well, I have to read it first. And I read it, and I said, no, this is, yeah, it, it doesn't make me look like a bad guy, but uh, some of these guys in here that you mentioned, they were the bad guys, and you make them look like good guys. You know, they write a book, and if you don't fit into the scenario, well, they change it. Like Hollywood, uh, you know, Pacino, he couldn't get his hand in the door. Why couldn't he get his hand in the door? I had my hand in the door. I had the guy covered. Some of the people in the movie were white vis-a-vis -vis this burglar, and they make him black. Why does Hollywood do that? They they profile people. This this guy was a a white burglar, and and you make him a black kid. And if I try and say anything, how could one little man like me fight Hollywood? Well, that might answer your last question: why I'm still here and still fighting. Because before I go, I want to leave the truth. There's nothing on my records about even me getting the Medal of Honor. They make it look like I got the Medal of Honor for exposing corruption. That's the biggest lie of all. They use my name to embellish their own. That's what corrupt people do. So kids, be very careful who you associate with. Because once you give up your name, you will never get it back. And when you keep it, you will have it for a lifetime and for generations to come. So thank you so much.